Okay, everybody, welcome to the uh, next edition of the surface mount um, printed circuit board class. Uh, at this point in time, there's been enough boards sent out to be manufactured that it's time to actually talk about the soldering uh, process. Uh, by the way, I'm Wayne Gramlich, uh, if you haven't seen any of the other videos. Um, so I'm going to be honest here. I don't view myself as an expert on surface mount soldering. I've been learning like everybody else. Uh, what I discovered is that I was further ahead than most people I was talking to. So that's why I'm, I'm in front of the camera rather than behind the camera uh, listening. Okay, so um, today's going to be basically a show and tell. So I'll do, do 15, 20 minutes of show and tell. We'll take some questions and then I'll do another 15 minutes of show and tell. Um, so the first thing is um, soldering iron. Okay. Um, so soldering irons come in all sizes and shapes. Okay. Um, I've got two here. Okay. Um, with, if you don't know various brands, they're both soldering irons. They both have a uh, temperature control and uh, stuff like that. Um, this one popped out. Okay. So, now, having said that, not all soldering irons are created equal. Okay? This, I don't know where I got it. And I'm not, I don't want to badmouth the company that made it, but there are what we call entry-level soldering irons that are pretty marginal devices, okay? Uh, this one is pretty bad, okay? It can, I can barely do this the most basic soldering with it. Uh, you cannot tell by looking at the box whether or not you have a good one or a bad one, okay? It's basically word of mouth and everything. Okay, so I'm going to make it real easy for you folks here in the Bay Area. Uh, you want a HACO. Okay, that's kind of, I wouldn't do anything less than a HACO for, um, it's, it's H, H A K, I think it's two K's O. Okay. Okay, and we'll probably get that in the, up in the class notes. Um, the reason for that is you can buy them at Fry's. Okay. Now this is a Heiko um, 936, uh, and they no longer make this one. They now make the Heiko 888. Okay, the 888 is in a plastic container. This is kind of this is plastic too, but uh, it's it's a square. Um, the uh, the reason why you want to just buy them at Fry's is because now you can buy the various tips and attachments. Okay, by just you know you need it now, you drive to Fry's, you buy it. Okay, uh, I believe that the 936 exchangeable tips are uh, completely uh, interchangeable with the 888. So I, I'm, I haven't verified that yet. But you know, this is this is you know, you want exchangeable tips. Um, you can just you know, you can just sort of see this one's uh, good. Now, most of the lower end hobby grade um, soldering irons. They have the same kind of thing. They have changeable tips too. It's just that you can barely get this one to work, whereas the Heiko is very, very, very good indeed. Okay. Now, these are about ninety dollars. Okay. Uh, you'll have to pay a little sales tax because the state's got to get its cut. Um, I actually prefer the 936 because you can actually stack these things. It's actually designed. It has a very interesting little design here for stacking. The new one doesn't do that. Okay, I'm not going to belabor this. The there's a, two versions of the 888. One has a digital display and one does not. I'd probably spend the extra few bucks and get the digital one. Why not? Because then you can sort of key in the temperature you want. You start getting a good feel for what temperatures are. Now the temperature range on this is from uh, about 200 centigrade, and it can go all the way up to um, 480 centigrade. Okay, so we tend to operate down at the uh, 250 to 300 range for doing the surface mountain stuff, and for the through hole stuff, I crank it all the way up and go at it. 
Now, I've been soldering since I was a teenager, which was a long time ago. Um, and so I'm pretty good at it. Uh, other people might need to back it off a little uh, when they're doing their through hole because they're, they're, they don't have that, you know, you know, get it in there, heat it up, and get it out thing. Because otherwise, you can just burn things up if you, if, if you keep your tip on too much. So that's uh, the recommendation. Uh, this comes with holder and stuff. Now, if you're one of these people that's like well off, okay, or you think you're going to be doing this for your li livelihood, uh, the high end, the best in the business soldering iron that everybody loves is something called the JBC, I believe, okay, and that's about a $450 uh, um, soldering iron, okay, and it is uh, really nice. And I only know one person that owns one, and I have yet to see it. Uh, well, one of these days I'll get to see it. Um, he's, working for, he's working for a startup that's under the radar, uh, and they aren't going to announce their product until uh, the end of this month. And uh, that, that's when I'll finally be able to get into his lab and, and see the thing. But it's got changeable chips, warms up really fast. It's slick. Mm. Okay. So, so you're going to see me stumbling Wayne. around a bit here as I grab things and show them off and stuff. Wayne, yeah. you want me to move? I just wonder, what about the soldering iron called nut cows? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's another yeah. fairly well-known well brand called Weller. Weller. Okay. I want to be very sure you understand this. Weller decided they wanted to sell both the hobbyist grade soldering irons and professional grade. And they, you know, I would have made it some sort of marketing distinguishing, and all they did is change the numbers. So it's really hard to know which one is which. They had, I think they have like a shelf full of them out here in Dojo of the, the entry level ones. They're really not very good. Okay, they're, they're doing what they're designed to do, but they're really just for through hole parts. Um, and uh, the other issue on, when you do a soldering iron is you want to get the tip tinned right the first time. And a lot of times on your hobby grade ones, the person who turned it on the first time didn't, didn't have a clue that they were supposed to carefully tin the tip the first time. Okay. Can you explain that? Uh, it's hard to explain, but basically you don't want there to get an oxi oxidation la layer between the tip and the, um, your, your, your tinning. Okay. It, it make, makes, makes for uh, less durable tip and less durable soldering. So would you like put the tip on solder while you're heating it up? So while up you're heating it up the first time, you are, you're trying to melt the solder on the first time. You don't try and cover the whole thing. I, yeah, I, we could power this up if somebody will find it. Later in the video. They have a little tin tan syrup. Yeah. Can you just dip the tip in there? Um, it's the first time you really need to get it. You know, can, you, can it reach us far enough? Uh, I can't. Um, Let's see. We, we can I, do it later. Well, it's okay. I don't mind turning it on. No, that's okay. I think, think we're there. The, uh, it already has a battery indicator. Okay, we're going okay. to. Okay, we're going to have to pause while we change batteries. So okay. you plug that in. It's on. Okay. And so, time to warm up. Yeah. So pa let's pause that, and then I always bring batteries. <laughs>